Hi, this is John from Sysenge Quick, and today I'll show you how to set up Gentoo with System D as your init system rather than using OpenRC. So, the OpenRC guide is pretty well documented as it's been a staple in Gentoo for a number of years. System D support is mature, but unfortunately, the documentation is in different places and it's not all clear and some of the wiki guides are wrong or just a little bit uh, in need of tweaks to make it work quite right. So I will show you the process that I use to set up Gentoo with System D. So we are booted up into the System Rescue CD in a blank virtual machine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to partition the first hard drive. So we'll make a new partition. It's going to be 512 megs. We'll make a second primary partition, which has the rest of the disk. We're going to tag the second partition as LVM and activate the first one. So there we go, there is the partitioning done. So now all we have to do is go ahead and set up the LVM. So I'm going to do that by copy and pasting some commands I've already set up. So first we create the physical volume on dev SDA2. We make the volume group, which is going to be named Gen2 out of SDA2 and then we go ahead and set up our logical volumes. So we've got a temp volume with one gig on the Gen2 volume group, a four gig swap volume, a four gig var log, and the rest of the space is allocated for the root partition or the root volume. And you specify that with the lowercase l 100% free option. So now we can go ahead and make file systems on them. So we will make we will make a file system of ext4 on pretty much everything. So there's the boot partition, the root partition, the var log, and the temporary partition. And now we'll go ahead and make a swap partition on the swap volume. And we'll go ahead and activate the swap. Look at top, we can now see there is four gigs of swap available. So now we need to go ahead and mount those partitions. So we're going to mount dev gen2 root and we're going to mount that into mount gen2. Then we'll go ahead and change directories into gen2. We're going to make a few mount points, boot, temp, and varlog so we can mount our other partitions. We'll go ahead and mount the boot partition the var log partition and the temp partition. Swap space does not require a mount. And we're going to make sure our temp partition has the correct permissions, which should be 1777. All right, so let's go ahead and install the stage 3 files. We'll go back to root and I will download the stage 3 packages from a mirror that's nearby to where I'm at. Once that's done, I will look at the digests and let's go ahead and make sure that it is correct. All right, so I see that the digest is this. If I look at this SHA512 sum, it's looking pretty much correct to me. So I can be pretty confident that this is the correct package unchanged from when Gen2 set it up. So we'll go back into the mount Gen2 directory and we'll go ahead and extract this into the directory. If you need to find a mirror, you can go to Gen2 Downloads Mirrors and look for a mirror near you. All right, now that our stage tarball is extracted, we can go ahead and do a couple more things to get ready to go into our CH root. First, we want to make sure we've got our resolve.conf, otherwise we won't have any internet when we're in there. We will set up our repositories for Gen2 and make sure that the default rsync repository is in there. Now we're going to mount a couple of file systems, proc, dev, and sys, which will be needed inside the CH root. 
and then we're going to enter our ch root. So we will make sure that we've got the right profile and we'll make sure that we know we're in the ch root. Now we need to set up a snapshot of portage which we can do with the emerge rsync or web rsync command. And what that's going to do is it will download a recent portage snapshot. In this case it's getting the one from yesterday so that's very recent and it will extract it into user portage. If you want to have the very latest Portage package database, you can now do Emerge Sync, although this step is optional. You can always do that later. But I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so it's telling us that there is a new version of Portage, and it recommends we do that now. I will go ahead and do that just to make sure we're on the very latest version of Portage before we move on. That will not take very long to update. All right, so let's go ahead and keep configuring our system. We need to make sure that the Etsy M tab is not a regular file, but a sim link. All right, so now we'll edit a couple of files in here. We'll set up our host name. I'm gonna call this gen2-systemd. You do not need the domain name in here. And now we'll edit etc hosts. And I'm going to replace 127.0.0.1 with gen2 systemd.local domain and gen2 systemd. And then I'll just get rid of that line. Now we can go ahead and edit our FS tab. This is where all of our file systems will be mounted. So we want to start with the boot partition that's on dev SDA1. It's an ext4, and I'm going to use no a time for all of the partitions. Uh, zero is going to be the dump identifier for everything. Linux doesn't really use dump. I mean, it can, but um, there's a lot of problems with dump, so I would not suggest using it for anyone. We'll have dev gen2 root, also ext4, but the check is going to be it's going to be the first one checked dev gen2 var log in var log. Got the four on the end of that. And two in this case means it will be checked simultaneously with dev sda1. So the last one is the temp partition. It's also an ext4. And the last thing is our swap. So there is no mount point for swap type swap and the options are SW. There we go. We now have the SF tab configured. So let's go ahead and set up networking for our system. We're going to create this file um, as it doesn't really matter much what it's named. Anything in here with a dot network extension will be red. What's important is what you put in here. So I'm going to put this in here. My network device is ENP0S3, and I'm going to say I do want DHCP. Now we need to edit our make configuration. I'm going to add mArch equals native here, and we're going to set some make options. And in this case, dash J4 means we'll have four jobs running simultaneously. And in the use flags, I need to add the device mapper use flag. That will be for grub that we're going to install a little bit later. And now we'll set the password so that we'll be able to log into the system when we come back in. And now we're just going to need to install the packages and set up the kernel. So I'm going to install the Gen2 sources the LVM2, which is the logical volume manager, Linux firmware, Gen kernel next, which I'll use to configure and compile the kernel. Crony will be our cron daemon. mlocate is for locating files easier. DHCP CD is going to be our DHCP client. 
I'm going to use our syslog even though systemd has a journaling function. I prefer the classic Linux syslogger. I'm going to use that and we'll install grub as our bootloader. So there we go. We hit yes on that and as soon as that is done compiling we will go ahead and set up our kernel. Alright, so now that the packages are installed, we can go ahead and edit a couple of configuration files. We need to start with genkernel.conf. We want to make sure that LVM support is set to yes. And we want to make sure that udev is also set to yes. And now we'll edit the grub defaults. So. and we need to change the command line Linux. So we need to make sure that our init system is systemd and because we are using LVM we have to make sure the do LVM line is in there as well. Alright, now we just have to compile our kernel which we can do by doing gen kernel menu config and all All right, go into Gen2 Linux, support for init systems, add systemd support, and that should be all you need to do to set this up. So now we'll just wait for this to compile. The Gen2 Gen kernel compiler takes quite a long time because it's building pretty much everything in the kernel that almost any system would be using. So it will take at least a half an hour, maybe longer. I'll be back when that is finished. All right, so now that the kernel is compiled, we can go ahead and configure grub. We need to make sure the boot grub directory exists, and then we'll build the grub configuration. And finally, we will go ahead and install grub on the master boot record. All right, so now we can exit from the ch root and go ahead and reboot this system. So, go over back to the regular thing and I'm going to unmount System Rescue CD. Now it's going to boot into the Gen2 install. Alright, and there we go, we have our new Gen2 install, but there's a little bit more configuration we have to do before it will actually work. So we'll log in as root. We need to set up the system machine ID, systemd machine ID, setup. Alright, then we will configure the locale. I see what I did. I put a equal instead of a dash there. All right. There we go with that. And now we can enable some of our services. System control enable system D network D. This will make sure that our network settings get loaded. We will enable our syslog and crony and we'll add a regular user and let's do one more reboot all right there we go this is a gen 2 installation with systemd